Welcome to Tank Tuesday. We have a 300 gallon aquarium. We've got two pet bass named Bonnie and Clyde. And then we also have a big old bluegill named Sheriff. And the topic for this video is gonna be how to raise a pet bass. And we've had these two bass here for about a year now. And over the past year, we've gotten a lot of questions from you all about how to raise bass. There's a lot of interest from you all about getting your own tank and starting up. So I feel obligated to make a video kind of giving you the ins and outs of raising a pet bass and the things that you need to know. It's not rocket science, but there are certain things that you need to know in order to raise fat, healthy bass like these. So we're gonna start off with a few topics that I think are important. And then we're going to try to educate you on some of the things that we've learned ourselves over the years. All right, so probably the most popular question that we've gotten from you all is what size tank do we need to get for a small pet bass or bluegill? Well, just in general, people would say for every inch of fish, you need a gallon. So if you have a 10 inch fish, you need a 10 gallon aquarium. Well, for bass and bluegill, I can tell you up front that does not apply because for one, they grow much quicker than your typical tropical fish. And for two, they have a lot bigger bio load. These guys can eat and eat and eat. So when we got Bonnie and Clyde, we called them out of the Delta and they were probably roughly eight to nine inches. And we had two pets and a 55 gallon aquarium. And that didn't even last us. That was only 18 inches of fish, but 55 gallons didn't even last us six months before we needed to upgrade them to the 300 gallon. And you can see now they're probably pushing 14 to 16 inches, but they're still healthy. They're looking good. And we added a big one pound bluegill sheriff. So right now, 300 gallons is plenty big enough, but as much as they eat, they could still outgrow this 300 gallon. So when you size your aquarium, don't size it based on the length of the fish at the moment, but size it based on how long you plan on keeping them and how quickly they'll grow or outgrow that tank. But regardless of the size tank you get, I would always recommend getting the smallest size fish possible. That way you can get them as juveniles, you can raise them up. It's a lot easier to teach them as they're younger and you can also spend a lot more time and keep them in a smaller aquarium for a lot longer. All right, and the second most popular question is, how often do you feed your pets or how much would I need to feed my pet bass or bluegill? So. I've actually raised pet bass my entire life. I had our 55 gallon aquarium as a kid growing up and I had two pet bass in there at an early age. And the best thing to do is feed them every day. These fish are hungry and their girth is probably the perfect size for their length right now. But they probably eat on average, each bass probably six to eight minnows. And then the bluegill will probably eat a couple minnows and then he prefers worms or crickets. So be prepared to feed them every day guys and it's just like everything else if you take on a pet puppy or cat or anything like that you have to feed them it's the same way with fish do not get these as pets if you cannot provide some sort of minnows or live bait for them because that's the hardest part on a side note bonnie i bet you all these viewers that are watching this video would subscribe to tank tuesday if you'd hit them with a yawn right now you see folks our fish are going places a deal's a deal, hit that subscribe button. They don't eat any, you know, fish food or anything. It has to be live bait. So when I was a kid, I lived right beside a little small creek and I would take a little minnow trap out there and I would, you know, drop it off. I'd put some dog food or ham or something in it and I'd trap minnows and crawfish and I never ever purchased a single piece of bait from a bait store. I went out and captured everything. So you don't have to have money to do it. You just simply need to invest in a trap or a cast net or some way of going out catching live bait for your pet fish. Now what we're currently doing with these fish is we have a bait store right down the road that sells crappie minnows, worms, and crickets. So we just go down there and we'll get several dozen crappie minnows and keep them in a small 10 gallon tank and feed them every night of the week. But again, you don't have to do that. You just have to have means to catch your live bait. And another question that I get from you guys is that I just caught a pet bass or bluegill and they're not eating. Well, these fish are going to have a negative association with eating right after they get caught because they were caught, they were put in a new environment and they're still in shock. So it's okay if they don't eat for three or four days. It's just natural for these fish. It took Bonnie and Clyde about three or four days. The number one tip I'd give you is keep the lights off or dim. You know, they're not going to want to see a lot of bright lights. They're in a new environment. If the, the darker it is, the safer they feel. 
So the way we did it is we just put 10 to 12 minnows in the tank and I would notice each morning when I woke up there was a couple missing. You know, they would be feeding at night when everything was nice and calm and they felt the most comfortable. So just leave food in there for them, live food, and they'll eat whenever they feel comfortable. All right, and one other thing I want to mention about the size of an aquarium, if, this is one way that you'll quickly know that your fish have outgrown the size of the aquarium. If you have more than one fish, and they charge at each other at any time. So just in general, bass are territorial. Even though they feed together and they can school up sometimes, a lot of the times, you know, one of the fish will be sitting up under the bonsai tree here. One of them will be sitting over here up under Stonehenge. They like their own space. So if you start seeing a bass charge at another bass, or if, you know, especially if it's constantly doing it, then you need a bigger aquarium because they don't feel like they have the space that is required for them to feel where they're not territorial and they don't need to chase another fish away from their feeding zone so that is one quick giveaway that'll let you know whenever you need to upgrade or upsize your aquarium all right so our next topic is going to be about this water and that's one thing that's really really important to keep in pet fish and getting your water parameters stable and there's several tips and tricks that you can do to make these fish happy but there's a lot of parameters that you cannot see with your eyes that you need to know about and this is where I'm going to bring Liz in because she's the one who takes care of our water parameters, does all of our readings, helps out with the water changes and that sort of thing. She's going to explain to us what we need to measure and monitor in this aquarium. Guys, please don't get a new aquarium and not change the water out for an entire year. <laughs> if Liz would have only seen the aquarium I had when <laughs> I was growing up. So here's a really inexpensive kit that you can get that will test your water parameters. And Liz is gonna tell us a little bit about some of these water parameters. We're not gonna get deep into a chemistry course, but there are certain parameters that you really need to monitor to keep these fish happy. If you're starting with a brand new aquarium, it may take you a month or two to get your tank cycled. And you may wanna get online and read a little bit about the nitrogen cycle, cause I'm just gonna talk a little bit about it here. So first you're gonna get you're gonna get zero levels at first. Then you're gonna start getting ammonia. Then ammonia will turn into nitrites. Nitrites will then turn into nitrates, which nitrates are what you need. That means that your tank is cycled. Then you need to do some heavy water changes to get your nitrites and your ammonia back down to zero. And so after you've gotten those nitrates in the beginning, you should never see those again. That means that your tank's fully cycled. But you always wanna have zero ammonia and nitrates pretty low you know not over 40 probably 40 parts per million and then you just need to stay on top of your water changes every week so guys that's why you need a liz right there but one of the key things she said is once your nitrites the nitrites the one right there in the middle are at zero that means your tank is cycled and i would recommend not putting any fish in an aquarium until your tank is cycled so yeah like steven said you can do a cycle two different ways you can either do a fish in, which we don't recommend because it will it can harm the fish, or you can do a fishless cycle where you have to add ammonia yourself. If you want to jump start that cycle, you can add some things like Dr. Tim's nitrifying bacteria. That'll really reduce the amount of time that it takes to get your tank cycled. All right, so I promised you I wouldn't go into a chemistry course here, and there were a few things that I wanted to point out on that freshwater test kit, and Liz talked about those, but you see that far right column, the nitrates, that is an issue that we're dealing with right now and that's something that is caused in our tank by overfeeding and we are guilty we like to feed these fish let them eat really good but overfeeding leads to extra nitrates in the tank which can also cause this brown algae growth so if you look back there on some of these plant leaves these plants are doing great they're thriving but that's brown algae which is also called diatoms and you can see it here on the rocks it's kind of taken over some of our aquarium so when you have a new aquarium guys you're going to eventually probably see something like brown algae or some water issues or something and it's kind of up to you to stay on top of it and work through your issues and we think we have a solution for these extra nitrates that are in our aquarium that we're going to be showing you here in just a minute but Brown algae is a very common problem that can either be caused by lighting, it could be too much or too little lighting, or it could also be caused by something like extra nitrates. Bonnie with a half yawn right there. All right, as long as Sheriff doesn't bite Liz's finger off, we're gonna show you real quick how simple it is to do a water test. All right, so you take your test tube here and fill it up to the line with your aquarium water. Then you take your solution, it'll have how many drops that you need to add on here. In this case, we're using nitrites, so 
we would add five drops to the tube, cap it, shake it up, and then compare it to the chart here. So we would want to see the blue color on the nitrites. On the nitrites, that's that one right there. Further down you go, the worse off it is. And that's, it's that simple, folks. It's really easy to do. It really makes a difference on how happy your fish are. They're living in these parameters every day. And if these things get way out of whack, your fish are gonna be unhappy. So just stay on top of checking your parameters and stay on top of your water changes. All right, and the last thing on the topic of water is anytime you do a water change where you take 10%, 50%, anything like that out of your aquarium, make sure you add some sort of water treatment that will treat your tap water because some of your water may have chlorine. It, it's, there's definitely some things that could be in there that could harm your fish and even kill them. So make sure you put some sort of water treatment or conditioner into the water that you're adding back to your aquarium. So just a quick recap, make sure that your tank is big enough, make sure that you have enough live bait to feed your fish, and also make sure to stay on top of your water parameters and your water changes. All right, it's been a little while since we gave you a 55 gallon update, so here it is. And you will notice that you don't see our two pet shark catfish named Bruce and Jaws. And it was inevitable. We knew we were gonna have to swap them out of this tank into a brackish water tank. And Liz and I were about to set up a saltwater tank, but we didn't have it ready in time. So our friend has agreed to let us keep them in his brackish water tank until we get our saltwater hooked up. So we may have to give y'all an update at his tank to show you how Bruce and Jaws are doing here pretty soon. But right now, we've got our two Siamese algae eaters. One there constantly working they do work we've got our little hiding spot over here for Casper our Cory catfish and as well as Bolt our snail and then we have one more channel cat back in the back and the vote was for whiskers it was a tight race between Jackie Chan as in channel cat and whiskers and whiskers edged it out so the channel cat's name's Whiskers, and then the last guy that's in this tank, and I don't see him at the moment, is the Pleco. He's around here somewhere. All right, as I mentioned earlier in our video, we had an issue with nitrates, and what we've done with our sump is we've completely removed all of our bio balls here, and we're gonna start slowly replacing them with marine pure biofilter medium. What it is is an extremely porous ball that will house a lot of that good bacteria, but it'll also let us slowly start reducing our nitrates in our tank. So we'll let you guys know we've read nothing but good reviews about this product and we'll let you know over the next coming weeks if it helps us with our brown algae issues. All right, so if you look right in front of Bonnie's mouth down there hiding, let's see if we can get focused, yep. That is Red Junior. We had a little scare with him. We thought that he might have died because we lost one of his pinchers last week and we hadn't been able to find him. But he's hiding down behind the mega stone right here we're going to drop a couple of shrimp pellets in there we'll see if we can get them to come out let's see sheriff may eat them yep they definitely disturbed them they'll probably never make it down there to him there he is old red jr's a one-armed bandit now He's only got one claw, but he's making his way through that tree to get his little shrimp pellets. All right, so like we do at the end of every Tank Tuesday video, we're going to go over some of the most popular questions that you all asked in the comment section and roll some clips of these three feeding throughout the week. All right, first question comes from Braden Salata. Bama bass, do you think you will ever get a pet smallmouth bass? Because I think that'd be really cool. Well, Braden, I was just looking into that earlier this week and I may have a way of doing that because we don't have smallmouth this far in South Alabama, but I may have a way of getting one. I'll keep you guys updated with that in the future. Next question comes from Jake Warren. Which of the three eats the most? That's Bonnie for sure. She's a piglet. Next question comes from TJW15Nation. Hey Bama Bass, what's your PB and what'd you catch it on? I, my PB is a 13 pound one ounce bass. I caught it on a white buzz bait. The next question comes from Minecraft number one. When did you catch Sheriff the Bluegill? Liz actually caught Sheriff the Bluegill a few months back and she caught it on a cricket. Next question comes from Hank Snow Outdoors. I would love to see a scent test with different brands of scents. 
Well, Hank, you will want to see one of the, our upcoming videos. In the next few weeks, we're going to have a video that is completely related to scents and how bass react to them. All right, and last question from Eminem Outdoors. Pet Bass Olympics. <laughs> this, this one cracks me up. So Eminem says he wants to see a Pet Bass Olympics between Bonnie and Clyde, Shamu, and Gary. And guys, if you're unaware, there's other YouTubers out there that have Pet Bass, and their names are Shamu and Gary. But Eminem says he wants to see events including racing, minnow eating, topwater blow-up contests, etc. Guys, if you're interested in a Pet Bass Olympics, you leave a comment down below and tell us what you'd like to see in the Olympics, and we may try to make that happen. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the video. Here's a little sneak peek at something you'll be seeing in our next Tank Tuesday video. We're going to do some aquascaping on the bonsai tree and the other tank. But if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. We put out videos every Tuesday of these fish. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you all next week. Children.